what's up youtube we're back today we are going to be going over this freeze frame stretch effect that young tata did in the black boy jb music video with nle choppa i think this effect's really cool it's pretty simple and once you do it once you can like copy and paste it throughout the whole music video and uh not have to worry about tweaking too much if this is your first time watching my videos this month or in general go ahead and click subscribe because i'm going to be uploading every day for the rest of december we're calling it tutorial miss basically what i do is upload a tutorial every day and you guys can leave suggestions in the comments or follow me on instagram and dm me like a specific link or whatever because i know youtube doesn't allow you to link sometimes this is going to be a pretty quick one i think we're just going to hop right into after effects i'm going to show you what i came up with and kind of what we're going for and then we can go into the effect all right so there's mine and then there's his so very very similar effect there that's what i just made and then that's his so pretty much identical honestly can't really tell who's who what you want to do is you want to find a spot in the clip where i think in my opinion at least it's better where the subject is kind of like spread out he's not like all like his like arms are spread out so there's like some separation in between body and like the arms and stuff and i think it just gives it a better effect and then what you want to do is find a frame that you think looks cool he uses it as a transition here so he has it go from like five frames before and then the next that frame goes into the next scene so i just found the first frame in a scene and what i'm going to do is just go ahead and duplicate that so Control d and then right clicking on that going to time and freeze frame what that's going to do is it's going to freeze the frame so it doesn't move and then we're going to go where we made the mark Control shift d to split it and then go to preview holding shift on our keyboard and left clicking previous frame back which is going to bring us five frames back Control shift d again to split it and then we got five frames of the freeze frame and then into our clip so then what you want to do is go to your pen tool and mask out the uh the subject so i'm going to go ahead and do that and you don't have to be too too precise because there's going to be a lot of effects on there and the and the warp and whatnot try to be as best as you can especially because this one this one's like a really blurry frame i chose probably should have chose a better one but it's all right you can make it work on whatever one you want and then i just hold h on my keyboard to move around when i'm already zoomed in so you can kind of have to zoom back out and zoom back in over and over again and there we go we're framed uh we did the freeze frame and it looks pretty good but since i did a pretty rough job and it's out of focus already i'm just gonna go to the mask layer and maybe just do like a, a feather of 10 on the uh the layer so you can see that's already like a freeze frame effect that a lot of people use, but we're going to spice it up a bit. Going over here, we're going to use CC smear and drag that on. So what this does is it takes one point, it says from, that's the from point. So you can set it to wherever you want. I think I'm going to set it to like his neck and then it brings it to the two, it stretches it to there. So I'm not just going to have it go to the ceiling or to the top of the frame. And then I'm just going to bump up the radius. So it kind of, until we get to this part where it's just like, everything's kind of stretched, but you know, it's all personal preference, but where a lot of stuff is stretched, I think I'm going to go with that. And then you can play with the reach if you want to like bring it out a lot. I think I'm going to leave it at 100 here. And I'm going to keyframe the reach and then go to the fifth frame or the last frame and put it at zero. So what that does is it brings down his neck like that. So you kind of already got some movement. And then if you want, you can just play around with where you want it to go to and from. I like just dragging around and seeing what looks best to me. You can have it go to the side a little. I think we'll do that just like to the side a bit. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is add optics compensation. Click reverse lens distortion and then crank it up till you find something that you like. And then I'm going to move the view center point off to the side a little bit. So it kind of like comes in in a weird way. And we're going to crank this up a lot more and then move the center point again. So we got something like that. So I wanted to like kind of cover this whole side of the screen and then have that part there and then keyframe field of view, and then drag that down to zero, keyframe it, and then I'm just gonna open up the keyframes because I didn't put it on the last frame. We'll see what that looks like. So we already kind of got something like that. What you can go ahead and do is keyframe the view center point too as well, and you can have it like move throughout the clip. Maybe drag it down a bit like to the side, and then just drag it to the last frame. So it kind of just moves throughout. The then what I'm going to go ahead and do is add some wave warp. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is just add some wave warp. It's just going to make it look a little bit more liquidy. I'm going to make the wave width a lot, a lot bigger. And then the wave height uh, pretty intense. We could do something like 60 here. And then pinning, I do all edges so it doesn't have those lines there. And then we're going to keyframe the height. Go to the last frame. Make it zero. Or whatever you guys want. There you go. You can see it kind of is adding that more liquidy stuff. 
We can even make it a little bit more intense actually. And as you can see, kind of like jiggles back into the uh, into the frame there. And then what he adds is I saw some flicker in there. So we're gonna go to Sapphire Flicker. If uh, if you don't have flicker, I guess you can just keyframe brightness, like bright, like up two, and then like down to negative one, and like every other frame or something. But since we have flicker, we're just gonna have it do it for us. Maybe do something like amplitude, like 0.5. Actually, we're gonna do like one, and we'll see what that looks like. As you can see, it's flickering. So like I was saying, if you don't have flicker, you can just keyframe brightness like here. I'll give you an example. It's like normal brightness, it's bright here, and you make it less bright than the normal clip, normal brightness, and like, you know, just like randomize it or whatever. That's what Flickr does, basically. We could probably even do something a little bit more intense, like 1.5, and that's starting to look real cool. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do, or add next, and then what we're gonna go ahead and add next is some glow. I'm gonna use Sapphire Glow. You could use VR Glow, Universe Glow, a bunch of different ones, but I'm gonna use Sapphire. And as you can see, it's got that crazy glow. And then we're just going to keyframe the brightness from two to at the end to zero. And the reason we're keyframing everything at the end to zero, because you kind of want it to blend back into the original clip. So it's going to look as similar to the uh, last frame as possible. So there we are. We got that. And we can go ahead here and add some Gaussian blur. I like to click repeat edge pixels, turn it up to maybe something, whatever you think looks good. I'm going to do 30 and then a last frame again, zero. So that looks. Now it's really starting to sell the effect. And then one of the last things I noticed is he had some noise. So just typing in noise here, dragging that on. And then he kind of does the app opposite actually. He has it not much noise at the beginning and then at the end, there's a lot of noise. So we'll do a little tip here. If you go to the last frame, you can't see what it actually looks like. So go to the second last frame, just drag the key from there. And then you can just play around with it. You can use color noise or just normal noise. I think I'm going to use normal noise. And actually, no, I'll use color. We'll do something like 36. And then just drag that, make sure it's on the last frame. And we got a lot of effects here, but that's uh, that's pretty much the full effect there. As you can see, this is what mine looks like. This is what his looks like. So actually, I, th I don't think he, he might not even keyframe the uh, noise, actually. He might just have the noise on the whole time. So we could try something like that. Uh, just uncheck the keyframe button on the noise and then crank it up a little bit more there. And then I think I'm gonna just tweak a few things like the flicker, we're gonna bring up to two, the amplitude on it, uh, maybe 175. Uh, I think the Gaussian blur is a little too strong. So I'm just gonna go to the first frame and do something like 20 and see what that looks like. Now that definitely looks really cool. That's just kind of how to recreate that effect exactly, but if you want to do similar things to your freeze frame, you can go to the effects and preset tab and then basically any of the distorts, there's a bunch of them. If you drag them onto the freeze frame, they're all going to do something different and kind of liquefy it in a certain way, kind of like we did here, but just differently. So I think uh, some of my favorite ones are the Bezier Warp. That one you can like really change a lot, but it's a little bit more complex. Blend it, blob blobalize. CC motion flow, turbulence displays, optic compensation. Those are all really good ones to use. So definitely don't just limit yourself to recreating this effect like exactly how it was in the video. I just kind of wanted to show you guys how it, I did it. Also shout out to Louis Kenoy. He was the one that recommended this effect on Instagram. He just DM me the link and that's why I did the video. So big thanks to him. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for the video. If you guys made it all the way to the end, please subscribe, leave a like, comment and an effect I should do in the future could even possibly be tomorrow's video. I'm getting pretty close to finishing that overlay pack with the paper rips, tape, a bunch of different stuff, bags. Uh, I've been streaming on YouTube, kind of me making it, not the whole time, but I've streamed over seven hours making it and I've probably put in closer to 20 hours making it in total. Almost done with that, so look out for that. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.